What flavor do you think that is? Go ahead, guess. A lot of people will guess matcha these days or mint. What it, what it really is is just a vanilla milkshake that we've dyed green. Now, if I hadn't told you that and you tasted it, there's a pretty good chance you'd still get a little bit of a mint characteristic. You might think it was a bad mint uh, milkshake, but you still might get a little hint of mint. So when it comes to food, taste is how we evaluate uh, flavor and texture of the foods and things that we eat. Um, we only have a couple of different tools physically that we use to do that. We have five different uh, taste senses. Uh, we can taste salt, sweet, bitter, sour, and umami. But then there's a whole other set of things that we use to identify what flavor is and that flavor and taste is, and that's, uh, that's basically through aroma and smell and your olfactory senses. Your experience of taste is beyond just what happens in your mouth. I'll give you a good example. I've done this demonstration a number of times where we give groups of people yogurt. They're blindfolded. We tell them it's strawberry yogurt and ask them to choose which one has more strawberry flavor. The trick is that it's all vanilla yogurt flavored with chocolate sauce, but they don't know that. Everybody picks one yogurt as being more strawberry flavored than the other, regardless of the circumstance. The key to the demonstration is how I frame the question. I didn't say, what's the flavor? I said, which one has more strawberry character? And that limits the responses that people have. But if you ask them, they'll say, but I tasted strawberry. What we eat and drink is not just sweet, sour, bitter, etc. It's a combination of lipids and so fats and carbohydrates and protein and water. So I think it's strange that what we eat and drink is not a part of what we use as a paradigm for taste. So we need to figure out some, some, some way to include the basic tastes and to have these big four of food science included in one concept. So um, we need something else. And something else um, I think is called mouthfeel. And I think the concepts that describe taste, or rather mouthfeel, whatever you want, uh, describe well are three directions. One is called drying, another one is coating, and another one is contracting. So again, look at here. The product here, called lemon, will be very contracting. So every, all the acidity, but also everything that's very spicy, would be contracting. It contracts in your mouth, so your, the cells in your mouth, your whole mouth pulls together in some way. Then uh, coating would be, for instance, the banana. The banana is uh, soft and gooey and has some richness and coats your mouth. That's why we took coating as a concept. And then the carrot may sound strange, but for a while this, we call this drying. You can also think of toast, like melba or biscuits. But the crack of such a carrot is also an aspect that we call drying, because it breaks in your mouth, it gives some crispness, some hardness, gives bite as people say, and this, all these concepts belong to the, to, the, to the family of drying. So we thought it might be kind of fun to invite you in to participate in a little thought experiment. Take a second, think about the word cheesy. Now apply it to macaroni and cheese. What does that do to your perception of macaroni and cheese? Now think about it for a glass of milk. Not so good, right? We've done lots of experimentation with kids in K-12. If you name a food, if it becomes a monkey phone banana, kids select it more and they like it more when they select it. If you give diners in a fancy restaurant the option to select succulent fish or fish, they select succulent fish more frequently and they're willing to pay more for it too. And they like it better done some research with naming a salad in two ways. One was a very healthy and sustainable salad, and the other one was a Tuscan salad. It was exactly the same thing. But the Tuscan salad was really loved, and people said, oh, I really like that salad. And the other salad was said, was often passed, passed away. But people said, well, I don't want that salad because I, I, now I don't feel like having something healthy. So if you name a thing already healthy, then it has an adverse effect. 
people turn away from it and say, no, 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 let's have that Tuscan salad. So thinking through how things are named and use the proper words to um, seduce people in making the good choices or refrain from using words that, uh, that uh, turn people off is very important. It's, words are an ingredient, so they are, they, you can use words already to um, induce a certain food behavior. If we stopped and asked 100 people on the street, would you like to have a better diet? Most of them would say yes. 99% would say yes. But that doesn't mean they necessarily follow through on that with their actual actions. So one of the things that we can do with some of this information is set up an environment or use tools or cues to help us fulfill these desires that we say we have. So um, here you are. The doctor tells you that you should be low on salt. You have these low salt alternatives. But now suppose what do you do with your egg? You like your egg and now you cannot add salt anymore. Imagine that you understand what the function of salt is on your egg. It is contraction. It gives liveliness to the taste of, um, of the egg. Imagine that just a drip of lemon also gives liveliness. And then the role of this drip of lemon is not to make your, your egg uh, sour, but the role is that it gives liveliness, just like the salt is, to give liveliness to the, to the egg. And if you understand that, then there are many other examples as well. The drip of Tabasco or uh, fresh ginger could all do the same thing because they add something in a contracting field. And it will not be the same as salt, but it will be very close to your preferences. I guarantee you that. And that way of thinking, I, I think, would be very functional to educate our, our, our chefs with, or to do that in your own kitchen. Because if you know how uh, deliciousness is being made, then it would be much more easy for you as well to create your own delicious dishes.